Hi, Stuart here again at my pace. Uh, today I'm wanting to have a little bit of a chat about some of the uh, navigation apps and navigation tools. Not really going to talk about using the onboard navigation in any detail. However, I do want to have a bit of a chat about some of the tools that you can use to pre-plan your journey and then to send um, your planned journey to the car. And we're gonna look at that both from a uh, mobile app perspective and from a web browser perspective, which I have to confess, the latter, the web browser option is my preferred option for planning a journey, if I can. Okay, if you're out and about, I think an app is good, but I, I just like to be able to, um, you know, flip between browser windows, I look up things on Google Earth if I want to, or, you know, go to the web page of a location and have a bit of a, a read to, and that's, that's a little bit less fluid, I find, on a on a mobile device. So I'm probably going to sound very favourable to that, so uh, bear with me in that case. Um, okay, so let's get started. Right, so let's jump in and have a look at the ZapMap iPhone app. Um, you can download this online, uh, you can, um, from either the Google um, App Store or from the iPhone App Store, you register online, you give it some details about what car you've got, um, and you can use it to plan routes, you can use it to find chargers, um, it's got a really good uh, user feedback section where people provide feedback. Um, so yeah, I, I find it a, a really useful uh, ZapMap app, whether you use it in the web browser or on your iPhone, it, it's a kind of must have tool. Um, and as you can see, the blue bar at the top says ZapMap is actively using your location. So it's telling you it's using your phone's location services. And we are gonna kind of have a little jump around and look at some different things. So the first thing you can see when the map loads is that you can see that you can select the object, um, any object that's showing on the map and the uh, different color schemes obviously denote different chargers, different connector types. Um, and if you click on it here, like Redfield's Garden Center, you can see five granny chargers, uh, four seasons has uh, a couple of um, seven kilowatt uh, chargers. You can dive into the a specific place and see actually each charger and a comment on each charger so that's where the community piece comes in you can see the type 27 kilowatt there no issues reported the nice thing is and, and what I would encourage people to do is just to provide feedback on you know when you're using these apps because it, it improves the experience for everybody you can also see people who've uploaded pictures of considerate golf drivers who've iced um, which is the way that people refer to um, when a normal internal combustion engine car has parked on a charger and blocked it, to refer to as icing. Um, so this is where we want to go. This is Rayfield's garden center. Um, we want to go there because it's a set of free chargers. So jumping over to ZapMap online or ZapMap in the browser, as you can see, it's a, it's a very similar experience. I just find it a little bit more user-friendly. I can obviously zoomed out here. We can pretty much see all the chargers in the, uh, from sort of just below London up until the Midlands. You can type the, your address of your current location in. That, that's one of the different things. The location services, obviously, when you're in a browser, may not be as consistent as an iPhone because it doesn't have uh, GPS and location services. But you can quickly see, I found my location. I'm looking for nearby chargers. You've got a whole bunch of filters you could apply here. A couple of different, you know, you can select free chargers if you like and see which free chargers are near you should you be planning to uh, to drive in the direction of a free charger you can always stop off grab a coffee and uh, put a few more miles back on the car interestingly um, and just as an example that this is certainly sometimes tribal knowledge um, the chargers at the destination we want to go to Redfield Garden Centre are actually free um, free to use however they're not showing on this map so it is something when I log back in to that map I will try to go and fix through a sort of user feedback um, as you can see I've tried applying paid for free to use um, they're not showing up I'll even try you can even filter here as you can see by the particular type of charger you might want to use um, so if you just want to say see rapid chargers because you're doing a longer journey you can uh, you can select filters uh, and those filters will pull through into the route planning uh, section which you can see down the bottom left there select the route planner and you can um, uh, 
uh, filter on specific chargers so you're only stopping on fast chargers and obviously through that user feedback system if you can find a recent uh, notification that somebody had a successful charge there's a very good chance you're going to get to your charger and there there won't be issues um, you quite often will see issues highlighted here in zap map um, potentially before even the, uh, the the owner of the charging system is able to notify or put anything on their web page about there being issues with the system so again you can see here it's just the same customer feedback system i i, I recommend everybody use this it's, it gets better the more people use it um, and the more information you share about uh, successful charges but as you can see there's redfield garden center that's where we're going and that's where we're going to charge um, so jumping over to the jaguar app which again you can download from the app store or the google store um, and is uh, linked to your in control um, password and account system so what you use to sign into the, the navigation system on the car you can use to sign in here again we're going to search for redfield's garden center because that's where we're going and the more details you give it as you can see it's refining so there it is it's found redfield's garden center and it's saying 7.2 kilometers away which obviously i need to go and play with my settings and change to miles um, but we can quickly see where we are, where we want to go. We can set our destination and it's shown the route and it won't start until you actually say start. The nice thing is it will guide you back to your car. So if you're not at your car, it will guide you to your car first, then through the route. And then when you get out at the other side, you can unlock your phone and continue on to your destination from where you've parked. So it's a door to door system, not just a car park to car park system. And here we're jumping over to um, the In Control App Planner online in the web browser. Here's the home screen where you can see if you've set any current journeys and you can cancel them. You can go over to the route planner. Obviously, uh, because the browser's location services aren't as refined, shall we say, as an iPhone that has GPS, it might not always know where you are. So sometimes you're going to have to give it a bit of a helping hand. Uh, here I'm just um, obviously just typing in roughly where I am. Uh, it, it's got me about, about a 10 minute walk from where I that I actually am, but I'm very close to my car. So it will again, it will set your destination from where you are to your car. Um, and then you can obviously go down and add your final destination before planning the route, which is uh, this box here. So again, we're going to put in Redfield's Garden Centre because that's where we want to go to free charge. Um, you can add a waypoint, as you can see there. You've got some details about the destination you've got options so if you want to avoid things like ferries or set a departure time or date obviously it will do its best to um, pull down traffic information and give you a better idea of the journey save it as a favorite um, and obviously it gives you the standard here's your route uh, this is where you're going to be going um, and then you can click set destination and when you click set destination that is going to sync that up with in control online you can see that says that's synced and confirm it's synced you can go back to the home screen now and you can see that that journey has been set and is currently active and that's where you would cancel it if you decided you know, you know change your plans you're not going out now you're not going that's where you can plan it as you can see when you've set it on the iphone app you'll get this notification um, and when you start the guidance on the iphone app it, um, you can and will as you can see here uh, heading to my car um, just following the app um, verbatim it's only 50 feet i can see my car but you know i'm really just trying to hammer home the point that it's a door-to-door -door system not a um, car park to car park system and there we go we found my car and uh, you jump in the car uh, turn the car on as usual now i think this is where some of the feedback you might get from other ev owners about the um, infotainment system being a little bit sluggish um, it does take a little time to boot the Jaguar system. It doesn't annoy me. Um, but what does take time is for it to pull down that journey. So you can see it's loaded my user profile. The little purple buttons come up in the bottom right. I've gone to navigation and I would expect that most Tesla owners would tell you that they will be already be ready to go and press start guidance. I think the sat nav has found its position now. Now it's going to in control online and looking to see if there's any active journeys up on the internet. So it's going to pull that journey down um, and once it's pulled it down, it will be available to route plan. And that just that just takes a minute. So, you know, you can probably time it here, but it'll only be a couple more seconds. There we go. And it's pulled it down and saying uh, this is the active route. Do you want to use it? Do you want to ignore it? Obviously, we're going to use it now. 
and there we go it's pre-programmed on programmed our route to Redfield's garden center and the free chargers and here we are we've arrived um, it's got us in a slightly different location so I'm actually going to cancel it out because the store is right in front of right just so just to wrap up hopefully that was helpful we covered the ZapMap iPhone app and web browser app the in control iPhone app and the in control browser app as you can see there's a pretty similar experience there's, there's not a lot different uh, between the two um, I do find uh, route planning with that map is the way to go and once you know where you want to go you can um, just move that over to in control very simply done between two browsers um, not so simple on the iPhone between two apps so that's my preference the main gotcha that I found as you can see on the screen the password for in control so what do I mean by that? Um, well, I set up um, my uh, navigation part username and password online and used an exclamation mark in the password. Now, for some reason, when you log on to the navigation system piece of in control, um, it has a very limited keyboard, very different from the rest of the infotainment system, which has a reasonably rich keyboard. Um, however, the, the only special characters I seem to remember being available were something like a dot and a comma. So just, just bear that in mind, uh, if you can, I, I, I don't know if you can actually do this, I haven't checked, um, but you know, you can, if you can set up that navigation um, registration from within the car, then maybe consider doing that. If not, just stick to letters and numbers while you get it set up. Um, uh, and I think my general strategy for setting up accounts for this, which that I have set up a couple, um, is just to use the same username and password across all your Jaguar accounts. That means when you get in the car and you're logging into something, um, it's it's less guesswork. You're maybe guessing between different accounts, etc. Um, so hopefully this was useful. This is just my take on this. I'm sure there's there's uh, other things in here that um, could make things simpler that other people could share with you. This is just a sort of simple overview of really more just how to get started with using this stuff and how the basics all work. Just enough really to, to get you out the door and get you on the road and where you need to be. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, please hit subscribe and um, hopefully I should be back in around a week with, a, with another video. Have a great weekend. Cheers.